Hi Grade Sevens, welcome to another English lesson brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. We are going to explore the world of punctuation today, so I hope you are ready for that. A reminder as always of our email address, it's grade7 at worksheetcloud.com. Please do feel free to drop us an email if you have the time, we love hearing from you. As I said, our lesson today is going to be on punctuation, specifically two of the most poorly used punctuation marks out there, which is the semicolon and the colon. So let's get cracking with that. So what is a semicolon? Well, a semicolon here, you can see, is made up of a full stop on top of a comma. And that's actually very important because it helps you understand its purpose. So a semicolon is stronger than a comma, but not as final as a full stop. It's like a halfway ground between the two, okay? But when do we use them? So I'm gonna show you two pieces of text and I'd like you to read them through. They include semicolons, but used differently. Right, the first, the guest arrived at the party. Tom and Sarah, Paul, who had bought a present, and Christine, James and Lizzie. There was music, food and drinks on offer. So that's one. And then the other one, I thoroughly enjoyed that book. It was a delight to read. So both of these uh, texts use semicolons correctly, but for different reasons. And let's explore that a bit further. So the first thing you need to know is that a semicolon can be used to separate phrases in a list as opposed to single words in which we use a comma. So in that first text I gave you, the guests arrive at the party, Tom and Sarah, semicolon, Paul, comma, who had brought a present, semicolon, and Christine, James and Lizzie. Now, in the first sentence, we use the semicolon to break up the items in the list so that we understand how and when things happened. So here, I know that Tom and Sarah arrived together. So they're one party and I use a semicolon to indicate that. As do Christine, James and Lizzie, because I have a semicolon there to indicate that they arrived together. Paul was the only person who arrived alone. I use a comma for him, but I do learn that he brought a present. And so this use of a semicolon helps us break up a potentially complex and confusing list, making it easier for the reader to understand. So that's the one way in which we use them. So when we are breaking up a list of phrases. In the second sentence, you might say to me, but well then why isn't there a semicolon there? In the second sentence, there, it also has a list, music, food and drinks on offer, but they're short very simple, very easy to understand. So I, a comma is enough. I don't need a semicolon. Now in that second text I gave you, this example here, I thoroughly enjoyed that book. It was a delight to read. We're using a semicolon for a different purpose. So here I have two clauses that are very closely linked. I thoroughly enjoyed that book. It was a delight to read. They're closely linked. This links to this clause and therefore I can use a semicolon. In this sentence, the second clause here, it was a delight to read, explains the first clause. We could rewrite the sentence as I enjoyed that book because it was a delight to read. We could also split it up into two sentences. I enjoyed that book, full stop. It was a delight to read. So there are many ways of writing the same thing. So I could use a conjunction here, a subordinating conjunction to indicate the extra clause, or I could break it into two simple sentences. So by using the semicolon, you don't no longer need that conjunction. And it also gives your writing a little bit more variety than if we were always to use simple short sentences. That can be very boring. So, but remember, this is important, that the two clauses must be related in some way. We should not just use a semicolon instead of a full stop whenever we feel like it. Can you see what I did there? <laughs> so here are the simple rules to remember. A semicolon shows a relationship between two ideas. 
We use it to get the reader to think about the relationship and it is used rather than being very explicit with a conjunction such as because or therefore. Semicolons can be replaced by other punctuation marks like a full stop, you know, if we're joining two clauses or a comma in a list. And although they really help us to clear up complex lists, there's no occasion when you absolutely have to use a semicolon. Okay, and there's definitely situations when you shouldn't. So often if you're in doubt, don't, because <laughs> many people use them incorrectly. So here's when you shouldn't use them. Do not use a semicolon just to replace a full stop or introduce a list or end a sentence. Definitely doesn't end a sentence. But there you can see I've used them here to show a list of phrases. Okay, your turn. So, remembering those rules, read through this text and have a go at inserting semicolons. I'm quite sunburnt. We came back from our holidays yesterday. I packed everything I needed for the exam. My pens, ruler, calculator, pencils and eraser. It looked like it was going to be a very hot day. I wore my sunglasses. Well, this is a big one. I couldn't believe my eyes. Streamers dangled from every ceiling. Balloons hovered high in each corner. Presents were stacked in a column against the wall and windows, which I could barely see out of, and coloured lights lit the doorway, ready for the guest of honour to arrive. Wow, that sounds like a really pretty party. So you see if you can read those texts, and if they need semicolons, pop them in. Okay, let's see how you got on. So the first sentence was about being sunburnt. Here, I'm quite sunburnt. We came back from our holidays yesterday. So here, we came back from our holidays yesterday is information, a clause on its own that helps me understand it's closely related so I can use a semicolon there. I packed everything I needed for my exams, pen, ruler, calculator, pencils and eraser. No semicolons are needed there. I did that one just to see if you were wide, wide awake in the lesson. It is simple enough to understand with the use of commas, the list. I do not need any semicolons. It looked like it was going to be a very hot day. I wore my sunglasses. So here, this, wearing your sunglasses, has happened as a consequence of it being a very hot day. So therefore, I can use a semicolon. The two clauses are closely related. And now this is the really long one. So see where I spot, pop, pop them. I couldn't believe my eyes. Streamers were dangling from ceilings, semicolon. Balloons hovered high in each corner, semicolon. Presents were stacked in a column against the wall and windows, comma, which I could barely see out of, semicolon. Remember that is a relative clause there, so it's not part of the list and coloured lights lit the doorway ready for the guest of honour to arrive. So that list is quite a complex list and it benefits from the being broken up with semicolons. Remember, commas, little weaker, full stops, too strong. So a semicolon gives me a bit of a longer pause. Okay, but it still, still could work with commas, doesn't need to have semicolons. And as I said, we understand this is an embedded clause to describe the windows, so that's the which I could barely see out of. There's your relative embedded clause there. Okay, so now you've got the semicolon down. Let's have a look at the colon. So the colon looks like two full stops, one on top of each other. Okay, and that is very helpful to remember as well, because like two full stops, they are used at the end of an independent clause, just like a full stop would be. So, colons are used to expand a sentence. A colon can be used to introduce an idea or uh, an explanation of uh, or continuation that comes after the colon. So, there was only one thing the wolf wanted to do now, eat that juicy little red riding hood. So, I am expanding on the first part of the clause, the first part of the sentence, with extra information. 
The flaw in the wolf's plan was clear to see. He looked nothing like grandma. So there you go. I am continuing the thought, okay, after the clause. And then the other most commonly used of a co used and needed for a colon is when we introduce a list. So there were a few reasons that the wolf did not make a convincing grandma. His eyes, his ears, his gruff voice and his sharp pointy teeth. Okay, so here is the colon after grandma because I'm going to list the items that make him a non-convincing grandma. Little Red Riding Hood carried a selection of provisions for her grandma. A loaf of bread, some apples and a freshly wrapped pat of butter. Okay, again, just before I list what item she's got with her, I use a colon. So let's summarize now so you can kind of put this checklist into your own workbooks if you wish, when you need to use a colon and when you could use a semicolon. So to introduce a list, it is a colon. To separate items in a list, remember complex items, usually phrases, I can use a semicolon. To link closely related, uh, related sentences, a semicolon. To expand on an idea, a colon. To introduce a quotation, now I actually didn't do that one, but often if you've got a quote from someone, um, uh, Mrs. N you know, uh, Mrs. Niverson said, da, 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 you could use a colon. And to join sentences, which used, sorry, there should be a D there, a conjunction in the past. So if I want to con if I want to join sentences and I don't want that very obvious because therefore, however, I can use a semicolon. Right now, do you think you're ready for quiz time? Let's see how you get on. Right, A or B. So which of these sentences is punctuated correctly? A, I love the sound of the birds singing. I enjoy being woken up by them with a semicolon, or B, I love the sound of the birds singing, colon, I enjoy being woken up by them. Well done if you said A. A is correct because remember, these two sentences are closely related. She enjoys being woken up by the birds. How about this one? The woods here are beautiful, peaceful, quiet and lush. The woods here are beautiful, peaceful, quiet, and lush. Which one is correct? Well done this time if you went for a colon because I'm introducing a list. The woods here are beautiful, peaceful, quiet, and lush. I'm explaining why the woods are beautiful with a list. Now have a look at this one. Mother's words came to me semicolon, take care in the woods, or mother's words came to me, colon, take care in the woods. So which is correct? Remember, think back to that list, that checklist I showed you. Well done if you said it needed a colon B because I am introducing a quote and I know that because I have speech marks there. Okay, last one for today then. Let's see how you get on with this one. Little Red Riding Hood, took her map with her, it was not very helpful. Or, Little Red Riding Hood took her map with her, it was not very helpful. Which one is correct? Well done if you said A, that is a semicolon sentence. I'm joining the two clauses that are closely related. And remember in that instant, I could have had the word, for example, um, however, instead of the colon there. Little Red Riding Hood took her map with her. However, it was not very helpful. And I'm just taking out that conjunction and instead using a semicolon. Well done. So there we go. Hopefully less mistakes will be used and by yourselves when you're writing now using colons and semicolons. Remember though, there are things that you need to practice and um, that worksheet activity I've got for you today following this lesson is on lots of different sentence punctuation and grammar work. Um, so you may see a few colon, semicolon items in there, but not everything. And just good to do a good all round revision session. Um, but yeah, 
I have my husband who is 38 years old, still makes mistakes with semicolons, so please don't worry. It's something that we all struggle with. Okay, grade sevens, have a fantastic day and I look forward to our next lesson together. Bye-bye.